Thomas and the Freight Cars Thomas used to grumble in the shed at night. I'm tired of pushing coaches. I want to see the world. The other engines didn't take much notice, for Thomas was a little engine who talked big. But one night, Edward came to the shed. He was a kind little engine and felt sorry for Thomas. I've got some freight cars to take home tomorrow, he told him. If you take them instead, I'll push coaches in the yard. Thank you, said Thomas. That will be nice. So they asked their drivers the next morning, and when they said yes, Thomas ran off happily to find freight cars. Now freight cars are silly and noisy. They talk a lot and don't attend to what they are doing. They don't listen to their engine, and when he stops, they bump into each other screaming, Oh! 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 Whatever is happening? And I'm sorry to say they play tricks on an engine who is not used to them. Edward knew all about freight cars. He warned Thomas to be careful, but Thomas was too excited to listen. The switchman fastened the coupling, and when the signal dropped, Thomas was ready. The guard blew his whistle, beep, beep, and Sir Thomas, and started off. But the freight cars weren't ready. Oh, 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 they screamed as their couplings tingled. Wait, Thomas, wait! But Thomas wouldn't wait. Come on, come on, he puffed and the freight cars grumbled slowly out of the siding onto the main line. Thomas was happy. Come along, come along, he puffed. All right, don't fuss, all right, don't fuss, grumbled the freight cars. They clattered through stations and rumbled over bridges. Thomas whistled, beep, beep and they rushed through the tunnel in which Henry had been shut up. Then they came to the top of the hill where Gordon had gone stuck. Steady now, steady, warned the driver, and he shut off steam and began to put on the brakes. We're stopping, we're stopping, called Thomas. No, 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 answered the freight cars bumping into each other. Go on, go on. And before his driver could stop them, they had pushed Thomas down the hill and were rattling and laughing behind him. Poor Thomas tried hard to stop them from making him go too fast. Stop pushing, stop pushing, he hissed. But the freight cars would not stop. Go on, go on, they giggled in their silly way. He was glad when they got to the bottom. Then he saw the place where they had to stop. Oh dear, what shall I do? They rattled through the station, and luckily the line was clear as they swerved into the freight yard. Ooh! groaned Thomas as his brakes held fast as he skidded along the rails. I must stop! And he shut his eyes tight. When he opened them, he saw that he had stopped just in front of the buffers. And there watching him was Sir Topham Hat. <laughs> what are you doing here, Thomas? He asked sternly. I've brought Edward's freight cars, Thomas answered. Why did you come so fast? I didn't mean to. I was pushed, said Thomas sadly. Haven't you pulled freight cars before? No. Then you've a lot to learn about freight cars, little Thomas. They are silly things and must be kept in their place. After pushing them about here for a few weeks, you'll know almost as much about them as Edward. Then you'll be a really useful engine. <laughs>